Maria Montessori was a women's rights activist, doctor, and pioneer of education for children with mental disabilities. Although from a young age she knew she wanted to be different, she did not necessarily have a set path in life. Maria Montessori was born August 31st, 1870 in Chiara Valle, Italy. Her father was Alessandro Montessori, and her mother was Rinaldi Stopani. As a young child, her family moved to Rome, the city of great education. Young Maria liked to learn but did not like school because of the boring, repetitive way it was taught. At the age of 12, Maria decided she wanted to become an engineer. To pursue the school, she would have to go to technical school. Because of the time period, it was unacceptable for a woman to be an engineer. Her father told her that technical school and engineering was for boys, and if she wanted to continue her education, she would go to classical school. In classical school, girls would learn Latin, Greek, and literature, as well as how to cook and sew. If a woman was to have a career rather than do housework and care for children, she would be a teacher. Young Maria did not like this idea. She enjoyed mathematics and science and wanted to study them further. Maria's mother was more open to this idea and encouraged her. Eventually, with help from her mother, Maria convinced her father to let her go to technical school in Rome. When she turned 13 in 1883, she enrolled there. At school, she was strictly separated from the boys. She graduated in 1886 with 138 out of 150 on her final examination. She continued her education in engineering at Rome's Technical Institute. During her time there, she became interested in biology and considered studying medicine. All of her friends and family except her mother disapproved of her decision to become a doctor. At first, she was told a woman would never be allowed into medical school. After support from her mother, letters, recommendations from previous teachers, and persistence, she became one of the first female medical students in the University of Rome. Maria's fellow classmates did not like the idea of a woman in medical school. They made jokes and often deliberately left no place for her to sit. She played these things off and didn't mind them as much because, unlike some of her classmates, she was determined to study and become a doctor. Through all of this, her mother supported her, but her father did not show as much interest or support. Because men and women were not allowed to see a naked body together, she took her dissection classes alone. The first day of this class, she was confronted by death for the first time and was frightened so much that she considered giving up her dream of becoming a doctor. But she did not. She persisted, overcame her fear, and later became an excellent surgeon. She won a scholarship for a large amount of money as well as being granted the opportunity to work at a children's hospital. This sparked her interest in becoming a child specialist. She was awarded an exceptional score of 105 on her final examination, and after being awarded her diploma on July 10, 1896, she became one of the first female doctors in Italy. Maria was the assistant doctor at the university's psychiatric clinic. This provided the new doctor with an opportunity to study mentally disabled children for the first time. When Maria visited an asylum for mentally disabled children, she noticed something. She saw how the children were treated and knew that it was wrong. She also saw that there was nothing to stimulate the children, nothing for them to see, nothing for them to touch. She saw that there was no effort being put in to try and educate them, and that society had given up on them. In her mind, this wasn't right. This caused her to research what information there was on mentally disabled children. She came across the research of two French doctors, Jean-Marc Gaspard Ita and his student Edouard Seguin, who focused on educating mentally disabled children. Maria found in her research that mentally disabled children needed special education rather than medical treatment. She also came to the conclusion that mentally disabled children without special care and education became delinquents. During her lectures and speeches, she advocated for the education of mentally disabled children. Maria often referred to the work she had read and how these ideas when applied had worked in other countries. These speeches gained footing and became so popular that Maria eventually started traveling Europe delivering them. These lectures were popular partly because of the way that she spoke was easy to understand and interesting, but more importantly, the ideas she talked about captivated her audience. This caught the attention of Italy's Minister of Public Education. This led to a program being developed with the goal of educating mentally disabled children. She spent nearly 12 hours a day studying how these children in the program learned and taking notes on how to better educate them. Before reaching the goal of eventually helping them learn to read and write, she worked with them on basic tasks and motor skill activities. She took a more hands-on approach. She worked with each child on what they needed help with rather than putting them all together and just lecturing to them. She noticed that her methods were working. 
After helping the children for only two years, they were able to read and write proficiently enough to pass tests taken by children in traditional schools. Some even scored higher than normal. After conducting her research, she was later hired at an apartment in Italy to care for poor children while their parents were working or trying to find a job. The apartment kept all the children in one place so that they would cause less damage to the building. She was one of their caretakers. She observed the children and what they did. She watched how they performed and completed tasks. She applied some of the other methods she had used with the mentally disabled children to help teach the children she was taking care of. Maria found that when these methods she had used with the other children were applied, it had a different effect. The child, when performing a task, would devote their entire focus on it. They would not stop until they had completed the task. She also found that after the child performed the mental exercise, they were happier and seemed healthier. These observations helped her revise and improve her method for normal children. Maria saw potential. The method she had developed was based around independence and the child wanting to learn. She developed physical objects called materials that the child would touch and work with which would help them learn. The teachers acted as guides and would help the child understand the concept and keep order in the classroom, but they did not necessarily tell the child what to do, when to do it, or exactly how they were supposed to do it. Because what she was doing was not intended to be a normal school, it was not set up like a normal school. This allowed her to find the cause of what was going on in the child. What she had created she would later name La Casa dei Bambini, or Children's House. Initially, when Mussolini rose to power, he liked Montessori's way of teaching. He mandated that all schools be taught using her method because the children would score higher on the tests. They would work together, but when Maria refused to teach fascism rather than encourage independence, the relationship quickly fell apart. The Montessori schools across Italy were closed, and Maria Montessori left Italy. When Hitler rose to power in Germany, all the Montessori schools were closed for the same reason, but they went to a further extreme. The books of her teachings and materials were burned. After she left Italy, she went and lived in India, where she would live for the rest of the war. While she was there, she helped rebuild the education system in India. During World War II, she saw a need for peace, which drove her even more to include it in her teaching philosophy. The news of the success of her ideas was spread and were applied in many places around the world. She would continue to give lectures in established schools and using her method. As this happened, she, with the help of her son Mario, would record and further solidify the method, materials, and curriculum used. She would continue this until her death on May 6, 1952. Teaching a child about peace is achieved by creating a peaceful environment which allows the child the freedom of thought, but there's more to it than just that. Maria Montessori believed that in order to achieve peace, you must do more than just talk about it. The child must learn an environment which promotes peace within themselves. This starts at the young age with the concept of grace and courtesy being taught to them as well as how to express themselves. As the child gets older, they are taught conflict resolution and how to peacefully solve both personal and interpersonal problems. They are also taught a sense of a global community rather than an us versus them world. Maria truly believed that children are the future. She believed that in order to make peace, we must educate children, not just in an academic sense, but in the education of the whole child. In her words, establishing lasting peace is the work of education. All politicians can do is keep us out of war. The fundamental idea of her philosophy is based on the growth of the child's mind and nurturing of the child's need for learning. After becoming one of the first female doctors in a time when women were limited in what choice they had, Maria Montessori took a stand by believing that the way children with mental disabilities were treated was unethical, so she did something about it. She eventually extended this way of thinking to all children. Maria thought that a child could be taught a better way rather than the traditional way of memorizing and repeating information. She knew that the child's love and want to learn was important and was something that should not be ignored. She stood up by creating a method of learning that allowed the child to be independent and think for themselves, in turn creating that love of learning. She also created a way of teaching that better allowed children to understand what they were learning, using physical objects to help them be prepared for concepts and skills that would be taught to them later, as well as be prepared for the real world.